Good morning, everyone. How are you? Doing great. Good. Oh, awesome. Doing good. Well, we're very excited this morning. Uh, first of all, hi, I'm Liz Nichols, and I'm here with Stacy and Stefan and Jamie Lynn. So let's jump right in and to have everybody introduce themselves. But it's Jamie Lynn, I'm so excited you're here. I'd love you to uh, go first and tell us about yourself. Hi, Jamie Lynn. <laughs> um, I never really know where to start when I'm talking about myself, right? Uh, I had a seizure disorder. I lost everything in life. Um, now I do the air quotes because I don't think I lost anything. I think space was made for the life that I deserve. And I have been about three years uh, off of all pharmaceuticals, three and a half years seizure free. Um, when I was really suffering, I was homeless, hopeless, dying um, at my very worst. And now I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm healthy. Um, I'm free of all those, you know, those daily, those daily struggles that we have when you're, when you're in the midst of something like that. And now I just, I get on things like this so I can show people what's possible because if it wasn't for other people showing me what was possible when I was in my darkest, I might not have known that I could be where I am today. You have such an amazing story. Like it's just incredible. I'm in awe of your journey over the last three and a half, four years. So for three, three and a half years. So, um, and Stefan or Stacy, who wants to go next? <laughs> Ladies first, go ahead, Stacy. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Stacy. I'm an author, lifestyle health coach and epilepsy coach. I developed epilepsy at the age of five through encephalitis. Um, it, the uh, virus had traveled to my brain and I went into an induced coma for four days. Um, they thought I was going to be paraplegic or I was going to have severe brain damage, but I came out strong and, um, you know, I struggled my whole entire life because uh, I didn't, I wasn't paraplegic and I, I didn't have brain damage, but they did diagnose me with epilepsy and till this day they can't find the scar tissue because it's so small but it's throughout my entire brain so I could take various seizures but I've been controlled for quite some time now and I take my medication along with um, doing natural healing and doing alternative medicine along with um, taking changing my lifestyle and I am living um, a good life right now and I just want to share it with others and help people that are trying to cope with epilepsy. That's so cool. And Stefan, over to you. Yeah, I'm out here in San Diego, beautiful Escondido, <laughs> California, enjoying life right where I grew back up. And it's like the universe led me back to where I was supposed to be in life. I went out there and had a very successful life in pharmaceutical sales, got married, homes, riches, everything, and still wasn't happy. I developed epilepsy at 17 years old from a football injury and was in a coma for three days. And from that point forward, I dealt with small mall petite mal seizures for years, not even knowing what they were. So when people hear these stories, we know uh, what you go through and what you've grown through. And our group is healthy, though. It's basically holistic epilepsy, awareness, and loving, transforming, and healing yourself. So having yeah. a new healthy life. And my life was just gone off the script. You know, get a degree, get married, get the white picket fence, everything. Yeah. And I still wasn't happy. And things were not coinciding with me with, with alcohol, with drinking. So I'm here to help others now. I've been sober 10 years and speaking at different events, and I want to get out there more to speak at schools, you know, for people to hear my story and I'll hear of all, all of our story. I love this holistic part of yeah. transforming because Tegretol, Topmax, Depakote, you know, that list of medications I was taking was having such huge side effects on me. So just letting people out there know you're not alone and we're here to control, delete, help you reset your mind, reset your life. Yeah. And I'm Yes. And I'm the old one in the group here. I'm <laughs> and, uh, um, I got epilepsy at 21 out of the blue. I was living the dream, had a great job, had been to college, traveled around the world, had a, uh, my own apartment overlooking the water, a car, you know, like living the dream, having a great life. And uh, at 21, boom, grand mal seizure. Um, and that put me into completely overturned my, uh, my life upside down. But the thing about it and why I'm so involved in providing uh, resources for people with epilepsy, 
that was 45 years ago. I know, right? A long time ago. And there wasn't any resources. There, nobody talked about it. There was no one to go to. Um, uh, there was, yeah, no one to talk to. Nobody wanted to talk about it. There was, you just take all these drugs, go for your EEGs. Um, you know, and I lost my license like three or four times in and out of hospital. Um, you know, so for me, um, I did get a clean bill of health at, when I was 39 or 40, but I thought, oh, yay, okay, it's gone, right? Well, the clean bill of health just meant, and I found this out five, six years ago, that it's just dormant in remission or hidden, but I've been off the pharmaceuticals for 20 years. But for me, um, yeah, holistic alternative ways to get out there. So yeah, all of us here are very much into helping others. And we all have a little bit of a different uh, uh, business or way. So I think this is very important that we get the conversations going because uh, yeah, I didn't start talking about it till 10 years ago. So yeah, now, yeah. Jamie Lynn. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, Jamie Lynn, we only got you for <laughs> A, a yep. couple a few more minutes. More. Yeah. So um, I just, I'm so inspired by you at such a young age and oh my gosh, you're doing so much good for other people and you've overcome so much, just like I guess all of us. Um, and I know we're going to run out of time. So can we interview you again when we have more time? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm, I can talk about, I can talk about overcoming you know, all day long, because I think that it's something that uh, most people don't realize that it's in their power at any time, no matter what the circumstances, right? It's in our power to honor what we're going through and, and overcome it. And I just posted something short about this yesterday, but a lot of times we end up like glorifying what we're going through or the struggles or what we went through rather than honoring it. And when we're glorifying it, we're letting it control us. We're letting it define us. And, and, and ultimately it can take everything from us, right? Cause we we're what we're doing is consciously choosing that path in that life. We're choosing for that to be our reality. Right. But if we're honoring it and saying, well, we all did, right. Like we went through something and now here I am and now I'm sharing it. Right. And we're not like, Oh, it was so bad. It was so hard talking about all you know and and talking about that stuff yes it's it's nice because people can relate to it but what we're sharing is the possibility right it, and it's the hope and it's it's what to focus on because when we focus on one thing it grows right like hey you've heard where attention goes you know where energy goes it, it, it you know attention flows or whatever it, it, where we put our focus that's what our life becomes. Yeah. So instead yeah. of focusing on, oh, it's painful. I lost this. It was hard. We're focusing on what did this do for us? It brought us to be these people and, and who we are today so that we're able to share with other people and tell them that it's possible for you too, if you choose it. And that's the scary part, that it's your responsibility. It's, there's nobody else who can choose which way to go, right? And like we said, all of us choose the holistic path, right? It's not easy to go against the grain, to go against what you've been told, especially when you're in a state of feeling so scared for your life, right? Like actually in fight or flight, not just the fight or flight we get because we're stressed every day, but like a real, like, I think I'm going to die kind of thing. The doctor tells you this is the only way you're going to do that, right? But we're showing people that there's options and I will forever be available to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, it's important. Like we all here have gone through it and chosen a more positive, you know, path on it. And I think it's so important that people know that we're here and there is, you know, others out there going through it. And we all have um, a commonality here where we want to help others with epilepsy and uh, make a difference. And if it just helps... If I just help one or two people, you know, it's, uh, it, it feels so good. Um, and I think it's important that we do uh, continue the conversations and, you know, each of us talk and uh, share things. And I want to do a shout out to Stefan actually right now, because Stefan reached out to me um, a months and months ago. And that's how this whole thing started was um, from Stefan reaching out to me. So thanks, Stefan, because yeah, we all wouldn't be to here today. Yes. I look yeah, back on everybody else's meeting. <laughs> people, were, people were coming into my life right and left. 
And I think it was a sign like, hey, talk about epilepsy more. You know, and then I started speaking at schools and then I wanted to get out there. So I just Googled epilepsy. That's how I find people, you know, and, mm -hmm. and see what their stories are. So that's how I found you, Liz, and then Stacy and everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, and I'm so grateful, Jamie Lynn, you could join us because I've been following you for years, um, and you've just got amazing posts, and uh, uh, I just love what you share. So I'm so grateful that you're with us today because it's very inspiring. And uh, um, okay, so how long have we got you for? Yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna say I'm probably gonna have to go, but I am. Thank you for having me on here, and I will definitely come back. Um, <clears throat> I love talking to you guys and. If anybody ever needs to reach out to me, you can find me on Facebook. Yes, <laughs> I was going to say. I'm always there. <laughs> yeah, how can people reach you? Um, Facebook or what's the best way? Um, so Facebook is the best way, but my email is brave enough to heal at gmail.com. And that's, that's the a... other way to get to me directly. Okay. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not in my email as much, but I do check it, so... I and love that name. Facebook page is right? amazing. <laughs> Brave enough to heal. And that's, uh, like I book. guess that's a good, that's a good that's place to leave it for me because that's what it is. Like I said, it's your responsibility, right? So you have to be brave enough and, and it does take courage, but it is possible. So yeah, thank you guys. I'm going to go. Next time let's talk about your story. And definitely pleasure meeting you. Yes. Yes. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> well, that was, oh my movie? gosh. <laughs> Jamie Lynn's amazing. Um, just amazing. So yes, yeah. I could relate to her because, you know, like when I was having constant seizures, you, you know, people start to develop fears, you know, they don't want to leave their house. They're scared about hitting their head. Oh my God. You know, some people, you know, hit their head. They don't wake up. Some people hit their head. They can get dem dementia. You start thinking about these things. You start becoming fixated in your head. And then all of a sudden you, you, you fall into a sort of depression and you don't that, that will to want to overcome and to want to live and to want to be able to, you know, cross those obstacles, you know, becomes less and less and less unless you learn how to, you know, empower yourself and look at the positive. And like Stefan said, retrain your brain, you know, because there always is hope, you know, if you want something and you really want it, there are ways to get it. You just have to reach out and people will be there for you. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, and that thing about the head, I remember one of my seizures, um, I hit the corner of a wall, but it had uh, metal. And so I hit the corner of the wall right down sort of here. And as I hit the wall and I fell to the concrete, um, I split my head open. But mm. what I, it, the thing about the head injuries is that, you know, the concussion plus there was, I had to get surgery around my ear because I, or I guess stitches, sorry, not surgery. Um, and it has such an impact because of the concussion and of course, you know, there's a little line in my head now. And uh, um, so things like that happen and a little bit of hearing loss on the left side from that one seizure and the hit to the head. So it's really important that we do look after our brain. Yeah, you know, I, I've had five concussions and the last last one I had a hematoma with the concussion and I started to notice as I was having the fallen down hit in my head, because you know, I was starting to lose my memory, like my memory wasn't as sharp, you know, and it wasn't until I started to become seizure free, my brain was actually healing itself because then I noticed that my my memory was getting stronger, because my husband would tell me something and I forget for forget what he told me. And then he didn't realize how bad my memory was truly getting and he would get annoyed don't you listen to what I have to say and I'm like I don't remember you saying that you know and um it would be upsetting you know um because you know you truly could do a lot of damage to the brain and it's very scary um you know so that's why you have to take these things in consideration and look to heal because you know the outcome could be very serious you know and um you you really have to you know people have to get out of that pity party and really you know do what's right for them you know and and think about you know how how, you know, how they could help themselves. And, you know, also the people around them who are caring for them, they're going through a lot too. I never realized how much my family went through being my caretaker when things were really bad for me. But the caretaker goes through as much stress in a different way 
as the person with epilepsy, you know? So if you're not going to do want to do it for yourself, think about the people around you and do it for them. Make that your momentum to want to actually be better and heal and, and get to, and, and reach, you know, to that, that goal, because it's possible. It, it, it is possible to, you know, you have to just have to learn how to cope with epilepsy and you have to, you know, it's a, it's a step-by-step -step program. Nothing happens overnight. And Stefan, oh my gosh, your um, yours, your epilepsy came around by a head injury. Well, part of it too, I was just thinking when Stacy, you were mentioning this, I had a seizure in LA Fitness, a racquetball courts out here in 2010. And I was having the feeling the aura came on while I was playing racquetball. So I went outside and I could feel it coming on. So I just immediately went to the locker room and I woke up in the hospital about a half hour later with a huge gash on my head. And I fell down and cracked my head on the tile. So yeah. it was like the worst experience because I always felt I could have lost my teeth. You know, people go through this, but we had to grow through it because I was still drinking heavily. I was still hung over, you know, trying to work out, be fit. There's so many mm -hmm. people out there with epilepsy that still work out, you know, ride bikes. Maybe they're not drinking. I was a combination of both. You shouldn't be pushing yourself too hard in the gym and you shouldn't be drinking at the bar. Yeah. Yeah. So people can understand they want to be normal this life. But from that seizure, mainly that one, I was just really sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I knew the alcohol had to leave my life. It took another right. year, but holistically, I started getting better even from that point forward. I started meditating, eating better. Alcohol was still there. But once I got my last DUI, I sobered up and just transformed everything and went away. Yeah. Well, you guys, this is awesome. We definitely have to keep continuing these conversations. Uh, um, it's amazing. I know we all have to go because we're out of time, but uh, um, thank you to everybody. And I'm so glad we're doing this again. Thanks to Stefan. Um, yes. It was exciting to have Jamie Lynn. I look forward to us interviewing more people. So people watching us right now, if you would like to uh, join us and, and be interviewed, um, that would be awesome. And also check us out on Facebook and check out all of us here. All our information will be uh, at the end of the video. And uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.